Hey, what's up guys? Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. Hey, excited to come at you guys with this video. This is another Truck Talk Tuesday. The first one or two of these videos have done pretty well with you guys. A lot of feedback, a lot of uh, comments. So on this episode of Truck Talk Tuesday, I wanted to come at you guys and talk to you a little bit about why I bought a new truck versus a used vehicle. Now, I know in the comment section on a lot of my videos, a lot of people are explaining, hey, you should buy a used vehicle for a work truck. And I'm gonna give you guys uh, the merits of both sides of that coin, both sides of that argument, and why I had the cards kind of stacked in my favor, which kind of pushed me over the edge with being comfortable about buying a brand new truck versus going a used vehicle. Now, I'm curious to know your guys' thoughts, whether it's new or used, so by the end of this video, make sure you leave me a comment down below. Love to hear your guys' thoughts and weigh in on this topic. Now, outside of making more money expanding services, let me talk to you guys for a couple different points about why I was able to go with a new vehicle versus a used vehicle. And the very first one I wanted to give you guys was talking about the price point on used vehicles. Now, you guys can say everything you want, uh, whether you're shopping in the market or you're not in the market. I have looked at this through and through, and the price point on a used truck is just ridiculous right now. They hold their value like you guys wouldn't imagine, and if you're in the market, you probably know what I'm talking about. Whether gas or diesel, if you buy a brand new $55,000 truck and it's two years old and it has 35,000 miles on it, they want $50,000. So you're only saving $5,000 off the top, and who knows what those people have been hauling or pulling for two years while they're breaking that vehicle in. For $5,000 savings, it's really not that much to just go ahead and buy a new vehicle. Now, I know a lot of you guys are saying, well, I can buy a 2009 F-250 with 200,000 miles on it for 9,000 bucks. I get that, but that's gonna lead me into another point in a few minutes talking about downtime and breakdowns. To piggyback off the topic of price point, another option that we had available to us was we had a plan through Ford. I'm not gonna tell you if it was A plan, X plan, Z plan, whatever plan, Christmas tree plan, okay? It doesn't really matter. But long story short, we were able to get access to one of the plans, which made a significant difference in the price point of the new truck. So that was a huge savings that if I would've just took the retail or the MSRP or even the invoice of the truck and we put our plan on top of it, it was already getting a lot closer to those used truck prices. So in my mind, it made the decision plus one in the favor of buying a new vehicle. Number two, to continue piggybacking off of price, we were able to secure some really good financing. Now, I'm not gonna tell you guys what I paid for the truck, at least not yet. I may do that in a future video. It's not really anybody's business, but at the same point, you know, you can look this stuff up. It's not too complicated, but we were able to to secure some really good financing. I'll tell you guys our financing rate, I have a 2.49% on 72 months, which is pretty freaking seller for a vehicle that is not uh, licensed or tagged or purchased business-wise. And by the way, I'll give uh, those guys a quick shout out. We went with Vibe Credit Union up here in Novi, Michigan. Super great to work with, super nice people. Uh, didn't take a lot of convincing. We uh, gave them our financials, a little bit of back and forth, explaining a few things, and it, we got approved within a week. And it was just a, a really good experience and a really good um, process to go through. Now, I would argue if you're paying north of six, seven, eight, nine percent, you're probably gonna not want to go. The new car option and you know what when you're self-employed uh, trying to convince a bank to give you sixty thousand bucks for a new truck that is sometimes a tough sell I know all of you guys who are self-employed can feel my pain uh, because you got to prove almost every dollar every cent and that's just with a vehicle I can't wait to get a, a mortgage on a home and go through that whole process being self-employed but nonetheless 2.49 percent on borrowed money that is not a bad interest rate at all considering the amount of money that we uh, borrowed now I will tell you guys this I put a gob down so don't think I have an eight nine hundred dollar month truck payment and uh, all that jazz but by the way if you do I'm not judging I don't care you're probably still making money with the vehicle so it's really none of my business but I'm not paying very much more for my truck payment than what most of you guys pay for your personal family cars so you got to go easy on me okay it's not as bad as you think another point I want to talk about and this could be a whole video for another time and you know what maybe I like to get an expert talking in on this maybe have my uh, CPA my tax guy talk about a uh, important topic which is section 179 now if you guys aren't familiar with section 179 like I said disclaimer disclaimer I'm not a tax guy I'm not a CPA but you need to start googling section 179 watch some YouTube videos on it and understanding uh, what those videos can explain to you about section 179 and what that is is a tax incentive for you to make uh, larger purchases and investments 
in your business and gain some pretty large deductions. Uh, there's some super deductions you can get with buying uh, more expensive vehicles. And you know what, there's a reason why you see almost every business owner driving uh, $100,000 Cadillac Escalade, Suburban LTZs, Chevy Tahoes, the whole deal. Uh, they're incentivized to do that. So whether you guys know that or not, whether you think it's a, uh, a loophole or not, by the way, for all you people that don't understand taxes, uh, a loophole, it sounds like something that it has a negative connotation. A loophole is just simply something that the government puts in place. It's called an incentive for business owners to spend money and to grow the economy. There's no such thing as a loophole. You think a, a congressman and tax people just put in these loopholes and nobody knows about them? It's a legal incentive for business owners to spend money and to stimulate growth in the economy. End rant, but that's just a whole nother topic. Gosh, I can't stand ignorant people that have no idea what they're talking about with taxes and, and loopholes. But that's a whole nother topic. Section 179 basically says that I can get a super deduction and save probably 18 to $22,000 by purchasing this vehicle and writing it off first year, whether I write the whole vehicle off or I uh, depreciate it over three years. Again, I'm working with my CPA guy. He's giving me some coaching advice. I know what I need to do. Um, I'm not that great at explaining some of these things, but it's a huge incentive to buy a new vehicle. And it can be a used vehicle, by the way. It just has to be new to you and new included in your fleet the same year that you purchased that vehicle if you want to write it off. Now, the last two points I'm going to give you guys, and in no particular point, I don't know where we're at in this order list, but I wanted to talk about downtime. When you're a single owner operator, you can't afford for your trucks to be down. And as you guys can imagine, I had one work truck, one vehicle, and if I lost that vehicle for the day with the alternator going, uh, I had a power steering issue, I had a rear uh, axle issue, uh, just really simple things like that, that yes, you have the money to afford to repair them, uh, but nonetheless, you still lose that vehicle for at least a day or two getting it into your shop if they have room and potentially losing out on $400, $800, $1,000 of day worth of revenue that I can generate. And it just got to the point where my truck was breaking down almost every other month. And basically, uh, I didn't want to have to keep it being mentally stressed and on pins and needles whether or not my truck was going to break down while I was out there working. There's nothing that freaks you out more when your engine starts knocking at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. You got a big day. You have rain coming in the next three days, for example. Not only are you trying to uh, catch up or pull ahead, but your vehicle is on the fritz and of course it always happens in the least opportune times for you to get your work done and so downtime was a really big uh, thing for me that I just couldn't really stand the mental stress and the freaking out of whether or not the truck was going to start that morning uh, again it wasn't a project vehicle by any means but nonetheless uh, if I lose one day of good revenue and I can't work my guys I can't work my employees or we can't do a huge job and we got to move things around that was enough for me to say you know what I'd rather just have have a new vehicle that's reliable, that I know is going to have uh, power everything that's going to work, the engine's not going to knock and rock, and we're just going to be able to go do our work and not think mentally about the vehicle and all that jazz. The last thing I give you guys, and I don't know if you can really quantify this one, but anybody who knows what I'm talking about will definitely relate, and there is something to a self-image boost, kind of like a business card boost. Uh, your vehicle is kind of a representation of you and your business. Business. Again, a lot of people subscribe to the philosophy of fake it till you make it. I am not a proponent of that thought process. I don't think you should buy things or vehicles or material objects to try to impress people. Uh, that can definitely get you in trouble big time real quick. You guys got to imagine that when you're pulling up to a job site in a busted out, rusted out vehicle, customers don't necessarily care, but you kind of care and the customer does kind of care. So it's one of those things where you can put your best foot forward, having that good image, that good first impression, having a nice vehicle and that doesn't just count with landscaping business it's just when you're kind of around town feeling more successful looking more successful of course that doesn't pay the bills but indirectly it kind of does because you feel like you're on a whole nother level driving that new car driving that new vehicle and it's not a reason to go buy a new vehicle by any means but it's a serendipity of buying that new vehicle based on some of the other points that I had just made so all that being said guys I'm gonna wrap this one up nice short sweet one of the reasons why I went with a new vehicle versus a used vehicle Again, we're adding tons of revenue to our business and our bottom line, which is the number one reason I bought this vehicle. We can pull more things, we can grow our business, expand services, 
I can plow snow, so on and so forth. Number two, we got a great financing rate. We got a great price on the sh on the truck. I had them bring it over from Iowa. It has exactly what I need, nothing more than it did it. Uh, we put a gob of money down, so our uh, payment is extremely low. We're able to write a chunk of this bad boy off for section 179, which I encourage you guys to check out. And of course, we got a great plan offered through Ford to incentivize us to buy a new truck, and that was a massive savings as well. Again, this is just my opinion and my experience and this is some of the reasons why I went with the new truck versus buying a older or used truck that was just uh, insane right now on the resale values of those used vehicles but I'm curious to know your guys thoughts when you're purchasing a new vehicle new or used are you guys a solo owner operator you want that reliability factor and you got some great financing and you went new love to hear your thoughts you guys have fleet vehicles you guys got a couple of uh, XL F250s four or five of them you got your own mechanic that can do your own work Maybe you guys go with used. Love to hear your guys' thoughts. Leave them in the comment section down below. By the way, if you guys want to have us talk about a future topic, make sure you leave that down below. Maybe it can be featured as a new topic in a new video for Truck Talk Tuesday. Guys, want to say a quick thank you for watching this video. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're giving tips and reviews and ideas about trucks and maintenance, our landscaping and lawn care company all the time. So definitely hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this one, please do me a big favor and hit that like button. Maybe share it with somebody in the community. Guys, that's it from me. Wanted to say a big thank you again for checking out this video. We'll catch you guys in the next one. You all take care.